I hope you're still awake. Well, yeah, I'm going to talk about our work on uh, the reconstruction of probability, uh, uh, posterior probability uh, distribution of over the image, also using multimodal data. So, well, Arkadius already convinced you that uh, what's the uh, why we want to get the entire posterior probability distribution of the PET image. So for each voxel, yeah, we have an, an intensity value and an uncertainty associated to that intensity. So here uh, we have three main goals. Um, so the entire posterior probability distribution. We also want to do some spatial regularization in order to reduce noise and partial volume effects as usual. And we want to use uh, the MRI because there is a potential synergy with, between PET and MRI and also because it's available. We do have a PET MRI scanner at our facility. So just a summary of the, uh, of the tools that we use here. So uh, we use a probabilistic model that kind of tends towards non-parametric models, which means that the complexity or number of parameters of the model somewhat adapts to the data. And we do use uh, Monte Carlo Markov chain sampling uh, that, as the previous speaker said, is prohibitively computationally expensive and has some convergence issues. I confirm it's computationally awful, but we're we'll still using it. It's kind of interesting. Uh, for spatial regularization, we use a different prior distribution uh, over possible spatial homogeneities in the image. Uh, for this, we need some additional information that well, usually comes from other modalities, here from the MRI. So we use already reconstructed MR images and any number of them. Uh, so let's see our prior. Uh, it's called the distance dependent Chinese restaurant process. It's maybe not the most well known distribution. But, uh, well, it's a probability distribution over possible clusterings of voxels into rather smooth areas. So a sample of the distribution is uh, like the image in the middle. It's a, uh, this is a, s a sample of uh, groups, possible groups of voxels that are kind of uh, have a similar intensity. So each cluster has an intensity that uh, here follows a gamma distribution on the right uh, that looks uh, like the image on the right. And you have, to, I don't have time to explain, but uh, uh, you have to believe me that this distribution is almost, uh, doesn't bring any information into our model, into our PET uh, model uh, about the voxel intensity. So the best way to understand this distribution is to see how to draw samples from it. So in the image on the left, uh, we consider each voxel and for each voxel we draw a link to a neighborhood voxel. So with the same probability towards any of the neighborhood voxels and alpha is a hyperparameter. It's a probability of a somewhat self-link which means that the voxel stays alone. It doesn't link to other voxels. And these links actually uh, produce segments, well, well, clusters. So our unknown image is a probability distribution over these clusterings and cluster, cluster intensities. So the main assumption that we do here is that the image is somewhat piecewise smooth, not constant, but smooth. So uh, the likelihood is the usual likelihood used in PET reconstruction. So uh, the likelihood models the noise of the observed data or the data that we actually measure. So here we have the PET projection data. 
uh, which are which follow the a Poisson distribution, and we also have we always have substantial source of background signal in PET that also follows Poisson distribution. And here we use an MRI reconstructed image that we model with a very simple Gaussian uh, distribution. The, the noise in the MRI image is modeled as Gaussian. And so what's the meeting point of PET and MRI here? Well, they share the, this, um, this interference Chinese restaurant process uh, uh, clustering. So th the clustering part of this model is shared by the PET and the MR. So how do we get the posterior? Uh, well, well, we use the base theorem, and our posterior is actually, so the probability of these clusterings, cluster intensity, given uh, the PET projection data and the MR image. So analytically, we can't really, really solve for this. So we're gonna draw samples from this distribution in, or in order to characterize it. Uh, we have a little trick here, which is the same as in usual MLEM uh, PET reconstruction, which is that we use a latent or hidden reliable end here, uh, which represents the number of um, emissions uh, corresponding to a voxel and uh, detected in a, a line of response. Or mm, that come are actually a background signal. So for s to sample the posterior, we use a Gibbs uh, Markov, Mon Monte Carlo Markov chain sampler. So one iteration of this sampler gives us uh, one sample of the posterior distribution. Uh, to build this sampler, we have to be able to write um, the conditional posterior distributions of each posterior variable given all the others. So here we have three of them. And one, when we draw samples from each one of them, that's one iteration and we get one sample. So the first one is the probability, conditional probability uh, posterior distribution of the complete data that I mentioned given uh, everything else. So this is a multinomial uh, distribution and it really represents some sort of a back projection of the detected counts into the voxels. Then we have the probability of the clustering, which is derived from this um, DDCRP uh, model, and the probability of the cluster intensity that follows another gamma distribution. So uh, these distributions are very simple, and uh, uh, it's simple to sample them as well. So once we've iterated this lots of times and got a certain number of samples, as much as we can, uh, we still want to get some sort of an image, one optimal image. Uh, so here we take simply the average of all the samples that we get. And uh, we also want some measure of the uncertainty. Here for each voxel or region of interest mean, for instance, uh, we take the value in all uh, the samples and we build intervals that contain 95% of um, these samples. So it's intervals on the posterior distribution. Um, and yeah, this is the name that is not very easy to pronounce of the method. Uh, we implemented everything in a um, open source tomographic reconstruction platform, uh, Casper. So here are some examples of results. This is simulation. Uh, we simulated a PET image and the corresponding uh, MRI image, and we added uh, a lesion in the PET image. And you should note also that the edges in the MR image are, are not really clear for all the, um, the structures that are really clear in the PET image. Uh, so on the right we have the MLEM, uh, the standard PET reconstruction at convergence, so quite noisy. Uh, nearby is the post-milted uh, version. Our result, so it's the RCTGF average. Um, this is our average image. So we do have some uh, clear edges. And um, uh, on the bottom on the right, it's the uncertainty 
image and uh, where, well, it's an image that represents uh, the size of these posterior intervals. So the larger the intervals, the brighter the image, um, the, lar the larger the uncertainty. So you can see that we have more uncertainty at the edges of uniform areas, which is kind of expected. And we also have um, larger values in the area around the lesion. And you can see that the edges of the lesion uh, in the area where we don't have MR edges, corresponding MR edges, uh, it's a bit smooth in our reconstruction setting. Oh, maybe I don't have time to go through all of this. But we performed some uh, statistical replicates. Uh, well, we simulated lots of times the acquisition of that data uh, in order to, to assess the uh, estimator bias and variance. And on the bottom right, we have for each uh, region, like white matter, gray matter, and the lesion, we plotted the bias and the, stand, uh, the variance or standard devia deviation. And for some, um, uh, for instance, for the lesion, we have similar uh, tendencies as for um, standard uh, MLEM, po maybe post smoothed, and for, oh, sorry, I forgot to mention that we also compared to a, a map method uh, with a, um, uh, that's spatially regular, like regularized with an MR image. Uh, so yeah, we have a similar, uh, so the bias increases and the standard deviation decreases when we increase the spatial regularization. And for our method, for some regions, we decrease both the bias and the variance. And on the bottom left, it's uh, an example of a posterior distribution that you can get for the, uh, the average of the um, lesion region of interest. So he here is an example of real data from our PETMR scanner. This is an interesting example because it's a glioma uh, examination. And you can see that on, uh, on all the different MR images, we have really, maybe you can, no, I have to do zoom in. Um, you have different uh, characteristics of the glioma. So the features are really different on all the images and on the PET uh, image, which is uh, the OSCM uh, reconstruction. So basically, these modalities are all somewhat complementary, which is good. We want them to be somewhat complementary. Uh, and so here I wouldn't call any of the MR images anatomical image or, um, so he here we used uh, the three MR images in our reconstruction. Uh, so our reconstruction on the <coughs> top left. And we, well, uh, we do see the influence of the um, MR images that regularize spatially uh, our PET image. And on the bottom right, uh, we have our uncertainty image. Again, we have some uncertainty on the edges and a lot in the lesion area. Uh, it should be noted also that, as already mentioned, the, um, the posterior variance is supposed to be somewhat proportional to the posterior mean. So we should get more <coughs> uncertainty in the um, high enhancing areas. And yeah, above it's an example of a posterior distribution of the lesion mean. So when we want to apply this model to a new examination, uh, here we have a um, uh, one hyperparameter. But uh, in the paper that we published about this, we tuned it manually. Then we tried to automate the, um, <coughs> during iterations, actually, we adjusted the parameter so that we reach a, um, an average cluster size um, that corresponds to a somewhat to a volume that's not far away from the, um, the actual spatial resolution of the PET scanner. And later, we have tried to, to set it to zero, actually, and to get rid of it. 
and it does give nice results. I mean, all the results are given with um, this Python parameter to do it. And well, yeah, when we want to choose the multimodal data for spatial regularization here, we have lots of time issues to, to solve. First, the resolutions of all the images are very different. And for instance, undersampling the MR image a lot in order to match a decent pet, re, uh, pet uh, voxel size, well, some, sometimes we end up with the regions that are really, really very small in MR. It's not really useful for spatial regularization. And, yeah. and yeah, I'm wondering whether this hypothesis uh, behind this method and all the other map methods that use MR for regularization, these spatial structural simila similarities, maybe we would, yeah, maybe we would, we could rethink about that or redesign it. Maybe it's a bit too simple for, for really diagnostic e examples like this Lyona. So we do have a couple of technical issues like the um, uh, making the sampler really, really uh, draw samples that really match the posterior distribution that we, that we want. That's what we call convergence. Also, we didn't include po um, resolution modeling for PET. We should do that. It should would probably improve the results as well. <coughs> and we would really like to, to interpret this uncertainty and to, to really use it, which is really not straightforward because it, it includes lots of different things. The uncertainty of the prior, um, the, um, the noise, the um, and as I said, this uh, correlation between the, uh, the average and the variance. And yeah, diagnostic test. Uh, of all, probably it should be tuned for each uh, diagnostic task. Well, uh, the models that say try to take into account the uncertainty are kind of fun. And I guess there are still some thinking to, to do about how to really use the algorithms for specific medical applications and vice versa. Yeah, that's it.